Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video. This time it is all about organic reactions. Organic chemistry is a specific type of chemistry looking into molecules that contain carbon. And in today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at different molecules that contain carbon, such as esters, alcohols and alkenes, and look how they react. Their reactions are actually defined by other things combined in there other than carbon as well. So we're going to have a look at how change in functional groups can uh, mess up the properties and make them react a bit differently. Here I've got an alkene and I can tell I've got an alkene because of the double bonds. Okay, If I was to draw it properly I'd actually add my hydrogens on and that's now ethene. Um, and alkenes are more... Uh, interesting than alkanes because of the fact the double bond means they're more reactive. I can add things onto them carbons. Uh, they are not saturated uh, like alkanes, meaning all the carbons are used up in bonding. So this makes them highly reactive and I can add things to uh, the double bonds. Okay? Uh, for example, here's a, here's a generic reaction, just X and Y, but I could substitute that in for a real uh, molecules such as bromine for example and this is the reaction we use to test for alkenes because uh, bromine on its own is orange and you, you might remember that from looking at bromine water in a lab and when you add that to uh, ethene what happens is the bromine will add on where the double bonds was and now I have dibromoethane and dibromoethane is actually colorless uh, so in this reaction you would see a change in color going from orange to colorless it isn't just bromine i can add uh, to my carbons i could also add hydrogen if i wanted to and convert it straight back to being an alkane and that would just like this, look like this with me making ethane instead. But because of the alkenes reactivity, that makes them a lot more useful than alkanes because I can change what is on uh, my carbons, whereas I can't do that with my alkanes. Remember that that is saturated. It's hard to control where I add my functional groups if I've got uh, functional groups which I want to add. So that's why alkenes are often more useful in industry. So, so far we've looked at alkenes and we know that an alkene has the formula C double bond C uh, and we'll just draw ethane just for an example uh, here and the molecular formula for that would look C2H4. That's how you'd write it out. Remember that alkenes have the general rule of CNH2N like that. But we aren't just going to stop at alkenes, we're going to learn about some other functional groups. And the first one we're going to look at is alcohols. Uh, and alcohols have the functional group OH onto the chain. So if I was to draw an alcohol, I will draw ethanol, which is alcohol, uh, the stuff that you find in beverages all over the country. Uh, it looks like that, and this is just ethanol that I've drawn out. Ethanol would have the molecular formula C2H6O. We don't just stop at alcohols either. We're going to look at carboxylic acids as well. And carboxylic acids have the uh, generic addition of COOH. And what that looks like in real life is this double bond OOH and then. This is actually ethanoic acid, and what that would look like written down as a molecular formula is C2H4O2. And the last one we're going to look at is esters, uh, which have the generic formula with COOR. And I'll tell you what the R group stands for. I'll draw out the formula of ethyl ethanoate which should look like this C H H H C and then there's a double bond up here and then there's a single bond to an oxygen here and then the chain continues C H2 and then C H3 like that and writing out the molecular formula would just look like this C 4 H 8 and then O 
two. And I'll go over how to name esters a little bit later on in the video. They're quite tricky to name. We're going to look at alcohols now and we're going to look at how they react and how we can make alcohols as well. So we can make alcohols using a process called fermentation. And this is the process we use in order to make alcohols that we consume in beverages or that we use in hand sanitizers. So fermentation is an incredibly important process. Alcohols have a few really cool properties as well. One being that they're highly combustible. That means that they burn very well. And generically from the combustion, we will make the products carbon dioxide and water, just like uh, when we were looking at alkanes and combusting them as well. You can also make some pretty strong alkalis uh, using alcohols as well. Um, alcohols react similarly with, to water when you add an alkali metal with them uh, and it will make a strong alkali uh, when you add a alcohol to it. Um, now the naming of it, it would be a sodium um, alkoxide. Uh, for example, if I was to add ethanol to sodium, it would make sodium ethoxide. And my other product is hydrogen gas. The last reaction we're going to look at is one called oxidation. And if we leave an alcohol uh, in the air, actually, it will... Uh, become oxidized. However, you could speed this uh, reaction up by adding an oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate. And what this oxidation will produce is a carboxylic acid. This is why uh, when you have uh, an alcohol, uh, you have to put the lid back on. Uh, say if you had wine, you put the lid back on because of the fact it will become a carboxylic acid if you leave it out. And that's what gives a wine kind of like a musty taste. Uh, so that's why it's important for wine manufacturers to make sure their lids are sealed tight. And that's why people taste the wine before their meal is because of the fact um, if it's become too oxidized, it will start to taste uh, like ethanoic acid, the vinegary taste. You don't have to remember all the balanced equations for these reactions. You just have to remember uh, the general th scheme of these reactions. So an alcohol, if it's oxidized, will become acid. Uh, and an example would be if I had propanol and I left it out in the air or added potassium dichromate, I would get uh, propanoic acids. Carboxylic acids are known as weak acids because they do not fully dissociate. Uh, what that means is that they do not fully dissociate to make H plus ions. If I was to show you what I mean by that, if I draw out uh, ethanoic acid and what happens when you add ethanoic acid to water is this uh, reversible reaction and it produces H plus ions. However, uh, it doesn't fully go all the way uh, to the right. The reaction is reversible and ethanoic acid is reformed. And so the H plus is not fully dissociated. And that's why it's known as a weak acid. Carboxylic acids will react like usual acids. If I add uh, my carboxylic acid to a base, uh, if I add it to say a metal carbonate, then uh, what I'll get is the same type of reaction. I will make my salt, which would be in this case CH3COONA. I will make water and I will also make carbon dioxide because if you add a metal carbonate to an acid, these are always my products. And all I need to do to balance this equation actually is just put a two in front of each one of them. Esters are really cool because they have uh, distinctive smells. You can um, actually, maybe in a lab, your teachers might have uh, let you smell some different esters. They often have quite sm sweet smells. Uh, they're often very different from one another. Some esters smell like apples, some like pears. So they're really fun to actually play with in the lab. Uh, and to make an ester, what you need to do is you need to have an alcohol and add it to a carboxylic acid and you make for yourself a ester 
and water. And this is a reversible reaction. If you add an ester to water, you will make a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So let's see what one of these reactions would look like in real life. If I had ethanol, for example, and I was to add it to propanoic acids, what I would make, ethyl propanoate and water. And I said I'd talk to you a bit about how to name esters, so I'll do that now. Uh, what you do is you take the alcohol, and that always goes at the start with aisle at the end, and then you take your uh, carboxylic acids, and that goes at the end with O8 at the end. I'll just do one more example so you can see what I mean. If I have butanol and I have ethanoic acid, this time what I will make is butyl ethanoate and water. Thank you for watching this screencast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to drop it a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all the new content that I'm bringing out.